Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this Friday. This is Lunchtime with the Lord, uh, and uh, we want to invite you to uh, stay tuned. Get your Bible out if you're able to do so at this time as we continue our Bible study through the book of Daniel. And today we're starting a brand new chapter, Daniel chapter number 11. And uh, we'll just have this chapter and one more chapter to complete, and we've made it all the way through uh, this wonderful book of Daniel. Daniel chapter number 11 uh, really, the last two chapters of Daniel focuses in on a vision, of course, uh, that God gave Daniel, uh, more further revelation. And it really focuses in on one of those uh, four world empires that we've been talking about uh, throughout the book of Daniel, specifically in the prophecy aspects of the uh, sections of, of the book of Daniel. We're, you will remember the first one, of course, was Babylon. Uh, that was Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, uh, as he brought back the children of Israel, uh, they were in captivity. Uh, then after Babylon uh, was the Mede and Persian Empire. And remember, one of those would become stronger than the other, and that was Persia. And then following that uh, world empire would be uh, the Grecian Empire and under Alexander the Great. And uh, that's really the... Uh, the main focal point of this last vision, this last revelation, this last uh, truth uh, through the last uh, part of Daniel, it focuses really on that third world empire. Daniel's living in the beginning of that Mede and Persian empire. He, of course, lived through that Babylonian empire, and he's there at the beginning of the Mede and Persian empire. So this, this was still yet in the future for him. And I, I believe that this vision focuses mainly on that, uh, that, of course, the fourth one was the Roman Empire. Uh, but uh, that third empire, I believe this vision really focuses in on that because of how it really impacted the Jewish people. Remember, uh, the whole reason behind these was uh, the, the angel Gabriel was revealing uh, to Daniel some things about his people, things that was determined upon his people, the Jewish people. And that ruler that would that would come to power after Alexander the Great, remember he, he ruled for a short time uh, as it was split into four and all those things. There was a, another ruler that came that was a that we've looked at in previous chapters that was a as a, was a type, a picture of the Antichrist, how he brought I remember he defiled the temple and all those things. Uh, that was prophesied. We've already looked at that in previous chapters. So I think it's a reason uh, that uh, this vision focuses in on that because of the the impact it had on the Jewish people. So let's read a couple verses uh, uh, of Scripture today. Also, I, in the first year of Darius the Mede, even I stood and confirmed and, and to strengthen him. And so uh, chapter, number 11, or chapter number 10 talked about the rule of Cyrus, the king of Persia. And now we're back to the Mede king, uh, Darius. And so this chapter would come before uh, chapter number 10 um, in chronological order. Now, uh, some would say that's a mistake. It was supposed to be Cyrus there. I don't believe there's mistakes in the Word of God. And so what I do believe is chapter number 10 was kind of an introductory chapter to this vision. And, uh, and so it really doesn't matter exactly when it was that Daniel received this truth. The, tr the, the important part is what the details were, the the. Um, the truth that's found there. And it says, even I stood to confirm to strengthen him. Now, that's not Daniel doing this work of strengthening. We talked about this yesterday, and really even perhaps the day before, that Daniel was the one that needed strength. It was the one that was doing the strengthening was was the angel, Gabriel. And so he, he, he strengthened him. And then verse number two, and now will I show thee the truth, the truth, and um, the truth. You and I as believers can have confidence in the Word of God. We can have confidence in the Bible. And uh, I know there's a lot of uh, partial truths in our, our world. There's a lot of complete misinformation with with just the intent of deception behind it. Um, you know, Satan was the, you know, Jesus said he's the liar and the father of lies. He's the deceiver. Uh, he is the one that has um, led many astray when it comes to uh, uh, some form of religion, uh, getting man to try to earn their way to heaven, and so forth and so forth and so on. The truth is, is this, that Satan will tell whatever he can uh, that you'll believe. Uh, whatever lie will work, 
he's willing to do it. He's willing to say it. And But you and I as believers, we can have uh, confidence that the Bible is absolute truth. Uh, it's not relative truth. There's a lot of uh, talk about in our day, relative truth, what's true for you may not be true for me and all that. But the Bible is true. Uh, it's absolute truth, whether it's re rejected, whether it's received, what, uh, whether it's loved, whether it's hated, it doesn't matter. That doesn't change the fact that the Bible is the Word of God. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. The word inspiration there means uh, to be breathed out uh, by God, theonoustos, which means, that was the Greek, which means literally God breathed. And so God moved upon these human writers to pin down the Holy Scriptures. And because God is the true author of the Bible, we can have confidence uh, that it is truth. It's not just relative truth. It's absolute truth. What the Bible has to say about something is more important than what anybody else has to say about something or what any other book has to say about whatever matter or subject matter you're thinking of or researching. And so here... Uh, the the angel said, and now will I show thee the truth, the truth. And so what he was about to inform him, uh, to reveal to him was the truth. And uh, do we have that same confidence in the word of God? Do we have that same appreciation for the word of God? Do we have that same love for the word of God? Do we have that same trust in the word of God that it is the truth? And it's a book about Jesus. In fact, Jesus said this about himself. He said, I am the way, the, tr the truth, and the life. It's a book about Christ. It's, it's God's revelation to mankind. We can have confidence in it. So the ga angel Gabriel said, I will now show thee, now that the time has come, Daniel, that I'm going to show you the truth. These things that's going to happen in the future uh, from where you're at. Uh, there, the, a lot of what uh, was real, revealed to him the last couple of chapters is history for us. Uh, but it was the future for Daniel. And so let's finish out verse number two today before we close uh, behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be richer than they all. And by his strength, through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Grisha. And so here it talks about after uh, Daniel's day. Daniel, of course, was there at the very beginning of the Persian Empire. Um, that there would be uh, the Grecian Empire would rise to, or the Persian Empire. Uh, there would be three kings before the Grecian Empire. And so three more kings. And yet the Bible says that a fourth one would be far richer than they all. And uh, we believe that to be the king that was, the Persian king that was in charge during Esther's day, uh, Ahasuerus, and Ahasuerus, however you want to say his name. Um, he, he, he was one that had uh, tried to attack uh, Greece and, and failed. And uh, that would ushered in the new world empire, the Grecian Empire. And so, uh, Ahasuerus. And so we believe that to be the, the richer king there at the end. And so he's showing us that it wasn't just the beginning. It wasn't just Cyrus, the king of Persia. But there would be others that would come after that, uh, them, in the Persian Empire before the Grecian Empire would take over. And so, uh, Daniel was receiving some more specific information concerning the uh, the kingdoms that would come. And it's going to focus in on this Grecian empire uh, for a little while over the last next several verses uh, because, as I said, the impact that they would have upon uh, the Jewish people. And say, here's our takeaway. We can trust the word of God. Uh, the angel Gabriel gave the truth, and the truth was because it was a message from God, and we can have assurance what we read in the Bible is God's word, and it is the truth. And so I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day today as we close out another week uh, with Lunchtime with the Lord. And I hope to see you this coming Sunday in uh, Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night. Uh, we're having a wonderful we'll have a wonderful time in the Lord, worshiping the Lord, and I hope you plan to join us uh, this coming Sunday. If you could, it'd be a great help to us if you would like our video, if you're on Facebook, or uh, I think you can still do that on even on YouTube. Um, and share our video. And uh, that's a very thing, easy thing to do on the Facebook, if you're watching on the Facebook channel. And uh, comment and let us know who's watching. And then one more thing before I close, if you're watching on the YouTube channel and you've not subscribed to our, our church um, uh, YouTube channel, would you please consider doing so? That helps our church 
and uh, get uh, more of an outreach uh, to others. And so if you could subscribe, if you've not done that, go ahead and subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. Of course, you just subscribe. It's one of your, Basically, it's favoriting our YouTube channel. So if you could do that, that would be a wonderful help to us. And God bless you. And uh, have a wonderful weekend this weekend. And I uh, hope you're staying in, staying safe, and enjoying this beautiful snow that God's given us. And Lord willing, we'll see you on Monday with God, with uh, lunchtime with the Lord. God bless you.